we are officially announced as the happiest city in the world. You wow. know, we got awarded that I a couple of years ago, yeah? Dubai was announced. They had it on Emirates Towers, like a huge <laughs> smiley face. The happiest city in the world. Uh, uh, happiest, uh, happiest people in the world. Thank you all for tuning in. I just want to give a big shout out to our amazing sponsors, Jawala, who have sponsored all of our Dubai episodes. As most of you will know, Jawala is a huge brand that's taken over the UK with over 47 branches and growing. Not only have they recently launched in Canada, but I'm proud to announce that Jawala will also be launching in the beautiful city of Dubai in February 2022 in the brand new Dubai Hills Mall. Be sure to follow their journey across the social media platforms. All the details will be in the description below. Get ready to take a sip of the East. Welcome to another episode of Recipe to Success DXP. Today I'm really excited because not only have we got an entrepreneur of sorts, but also a medical professional. Doctor, how are you? Hamza, pleasure to have you. Very nice to meet you and very Thank nice you very to have much. you on. Thank you for having us. Um, so why don't we start off, um, I know you're very famous in Dubai, um, but for anyone in watching in London um, that doesn't know who you are, just give us a brief introduction. So um, my name is Dr. Mohammed Naji. I am a dentist, a specialized orthodontist. Um, I was born and raised in Dubai. Um, went around the world for a while during my education period. Um, stayed in London for a little while as well. And uh, made it back home, yeah, which is Dubai for me. Uh, so dentistry is what I do by day and I do everything else after that so uh, been exploring a lot of markets in Dubai as we all know after the COVID it's been a bad time for a lot of people but I think now it's you know going up the way up so we're trying to look into many different uh, opportunities which we'll speak about further into the definitely interview. yeah definitely on that note actually I've heard um, you know we've been speaking to a few different people and they've they've been saying that the rise uh, currently is is like how it was many years ago um, that a lot of people left and it's like almost a new opportunity and those exactly. that survived are going to thrive now. Nowadays it reminds me a lot of what happened after 2009. So 2008 and nine, we had the uh, crisis happening and then a lot of people ended up leaving. We had, you know, a couple of bad years, but then somewhere around 2012 to 2014, that was, you know, the, the rise again. So if you look at it, it's pretty much a 10 year cycle. So now we're almost 2022 so i exactly. think the rise is going to go to 2024 so yeah it's amazing happening again amazing. Yeah. so london slash dubai um you know we've got a lot of uh, a lot of our audience is based in london yeah um it would be great to kind of see from your perspective what the difference is in your in your kind of opinion because i think a lot of londoners we we always look to what we don't have um, yeah. and so we we idealize dubai as you know somewhere different somewhere better even myself included um so it would be great to kind of hear your perspective on on the differences um, the nuances between living in in both countries look honestly i'm very biased when i speak about dubai in comparison with any other city in the world like i'm a, I'm a typical dubai boy let's say but um I mean, London does have a very special place in my heart. I mean, um, I don't know. There's there's this magic about London that everyone um, seems to feel in a way or another. Uh, but for me, um, I mean, Dubai is just 20, 30 years old. And in no time, it's literally being compared to the biggest and oldest cities around the world. So we have to give it the credits for that, you know? Um, and uh, of course, every place has its pros and cons. I mean, for me, as a person that was born and raised here, I do have my daily stress of work, you know, the standard that everyone goes through, uh, which I did not really feel that much in London, but probably because I was just studying there. You know, I did not have the day to day uh, problems to deal with at that time. Uh, but I mean, if, if we want to compare Dubai to any other place, I think it's the best that you can find, especially now during this uh, this era because uh, it became like an international hub it's a very cosmopolitan city so mm -hmm. you have people from all around the world literally of all uh, from all countries of all races 
living here and with everything that they've been initiating re- recently trying to uh, you know spread peace spread love people are just living happily together uh, I, I think this is uh, something uh, very beautiful for us to witness and, it's one of uh, the very few, con- uh, few where, places you can see in the exactly world. around the world and it's just to prove that this can happen this can work you know uh, I mean so it's like a test <laughs> pretty much it's it's just um, you know uh, people can live in harmony exactly we can it can happen if we can they used to say if you can uh, make it in uh, new york you can make it anywhere i think if you can make it in dubai it works everywhere yeah. else <laughs> yeah. so uh, let's talk about the clinic a little bit um yeah. you know we, we spoke about um your trade um your day-to-day um why don't you give us a bit of an introduction about the clinic itself you know some of the clients that you've served over the years and i'm sure the, these guys can see all of the amazing awards behind us as well um for the clinic um so yeah if you could give us a bit okay. more of a background yeah just to clarify one thing those are not all my awards <laughs> but it's, it's, it's <laughs> teamwork uh, just being, yeah it's teamwork also it's a lot of effort but from the whole team also uh, our chairman uh, dr Majd Naji, is my elder brother also we must give him the credits for all of this. So uh, Liberty Dental Clinic uh, falls under Liberty Medical Group. Um, so basically it's a fully integrated dental facility which includes uh, almost 24 dentists covering all dental specialities, uh, all under one roof, which is, uh, I think is the main pillar that holds our success because you can have the technology uh, but if you don't have the right people to use it, then it's pointless. And you can have the right people, but without the technology also, it doesn't work. Uh, so I'm, I'm very, I mean, we're very happy to have combined both of these factors in addition to one thing, which is 24 years of experience. You know, we've been present in the market for the past 24 years, uh, which is also a, a great plus for our industry because people feel safe, not just because of, the dentist himself, but also the facility itself is experienced. You know, we know how the culture is. We know how the market is flowing. We've been through through it all, you mm-hmm. know, ups, downs. So um, that that was uh, our beginnings like in 1998. And today we're very um, thankful for what we've reached to. Um, of course, with the vision of Dr. Majd Naji and with the hard work of the whole team, uh, we managed to achieve this and as you said we worked with plenty of people um, some of them are announced others are not let's, let's, uh, let's name drop some of the ones that you're comfortable that's, the, that's already in the public the thing is you're, you have an English audience so I'm not sure like, I'm sure we've got Arab very, very too. familiar with, the, <laughs> with that but um, oh actually I do have uh, probably someone they, they know in England uh, uh, Mohammed Al Mohammadi, who is the captain of the um, Egyptian national team, and he is the captain of. Uh, uh, I'm terrible with football. Uh, uh, <laughs> Aston Villa. Yes. Uh, Aston Villa. See, yeah. So he's still playing there as well. Uh, he was playing with Mo Salah in the last World Cup. So he's our patient. Uh, we do have a lot of um, international celebrities. We do have Fabio Cannavaro, who's who, who won the World oh. Cup in 2006 with Italy. Um, and uh, Riyad Al Zawi, who's probably famous in England as well, world champion kickboxing. Yeah, I mean, a couple of Red One, uh, Red One, who's the international music producer. He's actually the guy who discovered Lady Gaga. Wow. Uh, did most of the songs that we grew up listening to with Akon, uh, uh, um, what was his name? Pitbull, and all of these guys. So, all of those big hits are actually made by him. He worked with Michael Jackson, Justin Bieber, etc. So he's also our patient. Originally Moroccan, but he was living in the States. Uh, and you name it, the Arab celebrities are here. So I just named the ones that would be yeah, more course, familiar relevant. to your audience. Yeah, There's plenty more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. so so you said you mentioned 1998. Um, yeah. Dubai, I mean, was a different place then, right? Yes. I mean, we came to Dubai in the 80s, late 80s, and we witnessed, you know, the desert um, I had uh, I was at uh, the first place we lived in with my family was in a building that actually still exists shockingly on Sheikh Zayed Road it's the only old building still there wow. um, it's right opposite to Burj Khalifa and opposite to uh, City Walk it's right in the middle so that was the only building there along with the Dubai Trade Center there was nothing in between and then after that was Hard Rock Cafe. So, I mean, people wouldn't know this unless you lived in Dubai. Hard Rock Cafe is where AUD is now. 
So people always thought, oh my God, why are you living in Abu Dhabi? That's so far. We were living literally in downtown now, you know. So central Dubai was somewhere around Dera, Riga Street. Mm. That was like where everything was happening. And people thought that we were living at the end of the world, like, you know, close to Abu Dhabi. Because as soon as you saw Trade Center, you're almost close to Abu Dhabi, you know. <laughs> um, and yeah, this was like, you know, just desert and the beach. You wouldn't say anything else. And I was, I still am very happy and proud to say that I witnessed every single day of this. Magical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I've seen Burj Al Arab getting built. I've seen Burj Khalifa go up, you know, floor after the other. Uh, Sheikh Zayed Road from desert to what it is now. Marina did not exist. Uh, all of these places. So, yeah. So, w- what kind of inspired you guys to choose Dubai? Dubai? Yeah. Um, well, my dad did have a vision. My dad first came here in the late 80s. He had a project to work on here. And he thought from everything that he heard at the time of, uh, may his soul rest in peace, His um, Highness Sheikh uh, Rashid bin Said Al Maktoum, the father of uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid. Uh, they heard a lot about the plans they had along with uh, Sheikh Zayed. Um, so uh, everything was this being discussed. A lot of people saw a lot of potential in this place. And there were people, I mean, they are Bedouins, but they were people who would, you know, walk the talk. You know, they, they would discuss something and they get it done the next day. So not just my father a lot of people saw a lot of potential in this city and this country so uh he was like you know what might as well let's see what <laughs> happens and i i thank him on daily basis i think that was the best decision he ever took. risk taker um yes but i think it was something solid that he heard or so you know it was calculated risk almost like he, he, could, yeah, he could kind it, of see and it it's not just about him it's just that the people who are actually putting things into action here because uh, at that point in time there was literally Dubai was or the United Arab Emirates were attracting people to come from all around the world I mean they are doing this now but it's on a different scale you know back then they were just trying to bring people to invest and they could afford it you know so uh, I guess a lot of people saw it and my dad was luckily one of them so and yeah we're, we're still here 30 years later <laughs> so you kind of followed that path in um, kind of getting into the medical field yeah um, was that something that you were also passionate about growing up or did it just come later on? I always get asked this question. It's a very it's, interesting yeah, it's question. Yeah, fascinating Yeah, no. Um, no, dentistry was never my passion. Very, that's did you very feel the honest. pressure? <laughs> Not the pressure. No, a lot of people go like, oh, your brother forced you. Because look, my father, because of his job, he was never around. Like, you know, I kind of got to know him better at an older age. So um, my brother was my father in a way like there's a huge age gap between us so he kind of raised me uh, we lived together in the same room for the longest time ever uh, he taught me a lot of things and I'm not talking about dentistry I'm talking about life. as a child mm-hmm. life you know what's right what's wrong you know uh, principles so I grew up with him um, and I witnessed his struggle because we did not get it easy you know at, um, we've had the toughest times um, I remember when he first opened the clinic he was 23 years old and it was a pretty bad situation back in the days for my family where um, my father had some problems at work so he couldn't send any money to dubai to us Um, we had two of my brothers in the university Um, my mother myself in high school and my 23 years old brother who just started his dental practice with in a three bedroom small three bedroom apartment and he had to take care of the whole family at that time including my father Um, so when I was a kid at that age and he had a lot of tough days like there are a lot of people who actually did his uh, life story as an animation on YouTube you can watch that Uh, he reached to a point where almost 21 days not a single patient walked into the clinic and um, the landlord uh, the owner of the the unit would call him telling him look I need my checks right now I need my money right now otherwise I'm going to take the checks to the police Um, and there was that one day where he was like he called my other brothers which were you know younger but still like they were late teenagers and he was like guys look you know I tomorrow's the check I don't have the money if anything goes wrong, just, you know, try to manage with Muhammad, which is me and my mother, wow. just until I make it out in case I went to jail. Because uh, there was no patience. Very courageous. Yeah, uh, there was no patience. 
and uh, this story is on YouTube, but I'll just give you a quick uh, thing, like a quick summary of what happened. My father called from abroad and he asked my brother, how's work going? He's like, yeah, it's, uh, it's going great. Uh, you know, we're, we're fine. He didn't want to add stress to his life. You know, it's like, yeah, we're doing fine. It's like, um, okay, I'm, I'm, you know, like, I'm very happy that you're doing well. I'm very proud of you, but things are pretty hard over here where we are. Um, and I was just uh, checking if like, maybe you can send me some money because I have some people that I need to help and stuff. So my brother literally had, I think 2000 dirhams all in all, wow. like that's, that was his net worth, you know? And then to his head, he was in the clinic and he was, he was like, you know what? Uh, yeah, things are as bad as it gets. It's not going to make it any worse. He was like, yeah, sure. That the 2k, that's it. Sure. Just give me a few minutes. He goes downstairs, walking his way to uh, the exchange, the Western Union, to send the money to my dad. On the way down, this um, receptionist calls him. She's like, Doctor, where are you? He's like, I'm just going to go for run some errands. He's like, no, 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 come back now. He's like, uh, why, what's wrong? He was like, I don't know what's going on, but there is a family over here with plenty of kids, and this man has three of his wives with him, and they want to get all the treatments done today. He was like, okay. He was like, you know what? I did not turn back. I went, put the money down, sent it to my father, went back and kept working till late night to finish this until he finished his family. And he made 22K that day. Wow. Uh, that was the big shock because going that, from that to what a big jump. It's almost 10 times what he gave to my dad. And ever since that day, things went yeah, you know, great for us. So I witnessed him going through the struggle. Those 21 days, we I would go with him as a kid to the clinic. We would scrub the floors. We would sterilize the instruments. We would switch off the AC and stay in without any air condition. Imagine in Dubai, without air condition because that would save electricity. Uh, so dentistry was not my passion. Sorry, I spoke a lot. You can crop this no, later. No, I love it. I love it. Uh, dentistry was not my passion, but I felt that I owed him this. You know, my brother worked very hard for this. I witnessed it happen, so I wanted to pay him back in any way at that time. And my passion was marketing and advertising. I wanted to do something related to advertising and media. So the way I thought about it, my brother never forced me. He was like, look, you do what you want. It's your thing, your passion. And then I sat with myself and I thought, you know what, if I... Um, the dentistry, I can always do media and advertising. I can integrate that into my work. But if I did media and advertising, I'll never be able to become a dentist. So I chose the broader option and I do not regret it. Which is a wise thing. Yeah, I, I'm doing it now. You know, exactly. I have a lot you of media work. Dream. Exactly, thankfully. So uh, I did that. Uh, I'm doing both now and alhamdulillah, uh, dentistry really grew into me. I, it's something that I love now, something that I've been doing very well. I got to learn from the best and we are where we are now. <laughs> I love that. Honestly, you know, f from that story in itself, um, it's, it's so beautiful to see that your brother was so selfless that he was willing to give money back even when he had nothing. And uh, exactly. He just thought, you know, things can't get any worse than this, you know, might as well. Uh, and uh, he's still like that. And the, that and now the, he can afford it. <laughs> yeah, and, and the saying so. is that you know charity begins, begins at home, right? And yeah. and people a lot, a lot of the time they neglect charity to their own family members. And but the the rewards that you get from that is just tenfold always. Exactly. And um, yeah, he he's uh, he he taught me a lot about that. I I believe, of course, the hard work and the effort and the education played a huge role in achieving what we've achieved today. But a big part of it, we believe deep inside, is the contribution is paying back. There's always a way, of, you know, a way around. So uh, even from a religious point of view, obviously we believe that you can never go broke giving charity. Yeah, no, no. It's look, if you want to speak about religion, whatever you want to call it, religion, the mother nature, spirituality, whatever, whatever you believe in, um, it's an investment, a guaranteed investment. Trust me, I've tried it. <laughs> So might as well partner up, you know, if you're not going to do it with humans, partner up with the higher power. So it will, it will come back. Yeah. I love that. Um, whilst we're on uh, that kind of conversation of religion, spirituality, um, you know, we, you know, we all have our own beliefs, but how important has that been for you in your journey? And, and what kind of wisdom can you give to the young audience who 
um, kind of maybe need that lack of they need that kind of higher guidance almost look I don't really usually like to get involved in each this. to their own of course yeah but and I believe no matter what you believe in keep it to yourself you know you do your thing because that's one thing that is you know a, it's a vertical relationship no one must get involved and if anyone tries to just simply ask them to back off it's, it's not going to make any difference to anyone and I'm talking about literally anyone whether it's a family a friend it's something that you feel is something that uh, it's it's a power within you so for me personally I'm, I'm a believer I you know practice what I believe is right and um, you know the whole package a lot of people might tell me like yeah you know it's maybe it's not the belief it's your hard work maybe it's not you know this maybe it's maybe someone who supported you whatever it is whatever the factor I've had this package going on it's working out well for me so I believe that's a very big part of it personally and I'm I'm good with it you know it's, it's interesting because even in modern day a lot of the things that we're taught from a scientific point of view mm -hmm. i.e. Medi meditation and mm -hmm. you know various other things they have so many benefits on a personal level that you know many religions kind of showed that along the way as well um, so it, it's kind of it's funny how the world goes full circle I mean let's look at the bigger picture let's put all religions and all beliefs and all spirituality and zoom out they're just identical shapes with different labels they all they all speak about doing good they all speak about not doing any harm they all speak about helping others so you know just whatever you want to label it do the right thing no definitely yeah. definitely so um, fast forward um, you, you mentioned that beautiful story um, about your brother and you, and you decided to get involved how did you get involved um, obviously you didn't feel the pressure it wasn't necessarily your passion but yeah. you decided to take that, that that decision and integrate advertising and marketing how did that begin for you um, it look uh, I I did not feel the pressure directly but I was there I witnessed it happen I was there as a child and I always say that yep I it's 20 I mean Liberty Dental Clinic is very old it's 24 years old but I did witness the first day and I'm here today um, if it wasn't you know with drilling teeth I was contributing with other things uh, at different ages I was involved in different things you know as a kid I would at least accompany him while he was scrubbing the floors at the later stage I was helping out with the appointment system after that I helped uh, you know uh, build uh, the, 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 the internal system itself of the clinic um, at one point I was managing the non-medical part of the clinic when I was a student a dental student so because I couldn't practice here officially so I was doing the business work side. behind the scene the mm -hmm. business side so I kind of absorbed it absorbed it throughout the whole process which was a beautiful thing because now I feel that you know I just know it like the back of my hands it's a piece of cake um, but the media part came from uh, I mean, many ways. Uh, look, one thing I get this a lot. Ah, oh, you know, I I've actually heard that about. Ah, oh, Liberty Dental Clinic, man. It's social media people, you know, just go there. It's, you know, it's lots of bull. You know, they're not doing any work. Uh, it's you know, they're just people who have a lot of followers. Yeah, you should try it out. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's uh, uh, look. Uh, media and social media and all that we believe and we always even Dr. Mesh promote Dr. Mesh is officially the most followed dentist in the world wow yeah uh, on social media Facebook and Instagram combined they're all verified and that did not happen overnight because I know people who got that overnight that happened over you know many years uh, and he says it social media can take you up there but knock you down in no time because fine you want to go out there work on your media become famous boost your views and all that but trust me like one mistake or if you're not up for what you're presenting to the public it will take you down badly and there's no way up again you know so our theory is uh, do the work properly uh, answering your question about how did media work for me we did the thing properly excelled at it um, achieved the internal numbers first which is the patients the the number of the machines we got the technologies all of that and then 
we portray to the public. And our theory is always show 70% of what you have. We always leave that 30% as the wow factor. Because if I show 100% to the social media, the patient's gonna come here. There's nothing else There's to There's nothing else to impress him with, you know? He's gonna come here like, oh, okay. And a lot of people, unfortunately, they think that your success, uh, sorry, your fame will make you successful. That is the best formula to failure, you know? It's your success that leads to your fame. If it happens the other way around, you're not going to last for long. So um, we did that and uh, we did not go for what's been going on in a lot of, not just dentistry, a lot of industries. A lot of people show like 110% on social media. You walk into their business, there's barely 50% there. That's a disappointment. Mm. You're never going to see the client again. That does not last for long, trust me. So um, no, the sustainable way, the way that lasts longer is to always re leave room for, you know, something to impress your clients with. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that um, in your younger years, you were, you know, focusing a lot on the back end of the business whilst you were studying. Yeah. Um, how did that, where did that come from? Like, did you have some sort of knowledge or was it just that your family kind of showed you the ropes and? No, my brother was kind of tough at a certain point. Like, finish uni and meet me here quickly, you know, I've got work to do. Uh, so yeah, I did not, uh, I did not really go through my teenage years properly. I was spending them here. So, um, which was for my good. I don't regret it now. A lot of people think that, oh, you missed out on all the fun and the parties and stuff. I mean, now that I look at it, I can do it more safely and maturely, you know. It's a I, fair trade-off. Yeah, I, I don't feel, yeah, it's, uh, yeah exactly. So, uh, no, it's just that whenever I had some free time, I would come over here, you know, look around. Uh, I was never allowed into the treatment rooms because that's illegal over here. But I was, you know, always looking around. One day it was the inventory system. One day it was, you know, the appointments uh, software. The other day it was something on the roof, like one of those water containers broke down, you know, go up there and fix it with, you know, the workers. My brother always told me, you need to, before you know how to drill the tooth, you need to know how to change the electricity socket and the wall. I always thought that was super pointless. I was like, man, I can just call someone, you know, for like 10 bucks, they would fix it up. Why, why do I have to do this work? He was like, do it. And now I know why. You know, it's, it's different when you know like every tiny screw in your building, it makes a huge difference. First of all, no one can fool with you. Second of all, you can always sort things out much faster because I remember once he made me sit for like 10 hours fixing this dental chair with one of the technicians that came from outside. I was like, why, why? I mean, he's here to fix it. Why do I have to do this? He was like, you sit there and you learn everything that he's doing. I was like, okay, fine. So I sat there. Uh, there were 16 chairs to get fixed. So wow. one after, yeah, I mean, all of them. We were installing them, not fixing them. So one after the other. I got to know them very well. And now I understood why, because I see a lot of my colleagues in other clinics that go like, oh my God, man, like I had to cancel most of my patients today because my chair broke down and the, you know, the, um, the company, they couldn't send me someone until he came. So I lost like this patient and I could have done this and I could have, and it's something that literally I can just tie up these wires mm. with a bit of tape and it's, it's running, it's running again, you know, <clears throat> and I saved myself, you know, four or five patients and you never know what kind of patients you get. Sometimes it can be like, worth a whole month of work. So uh, now every day, like every day something happens with me where I know how to fix it, I kind of understand what he was putting on me. It's interesting because in a lot of industries, um, you, you'll always have um, individuals, and not, not to knock them in any way, but you'll always have individuals that they may have a lot of capital, they invest into that industry, um, and you know they hire the right people and, and all of that kind of stuff. But knowing, having that know-how when you're starting from scratch, it's, it's truly an advantage because it means that even if even if like you're in those situations where you know you need to do it yourself you can but also when you are managing those people and you're a leader it's easier to see you know how how are my staff getting along how can I advise them or I already know how to do it so it's, it's it, I think it long term it plays a big part look my idol and this is not just a cliche statement that everyone says in Dubai but I can I can say why now that you said that as a sign of Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum is definitely he does not need to and he's not obliged to go to Dubai airport 
at one or two in the morning and stand at the passport control to greet people who are entering Dubai. We've all seen this picture. It went viral, you know. Uh, I mean, he's, no, he's Sheikh Mohammed, you know. He, I'm sure he has at least like a, a billion people that would go <laughs> do this job. The man went there, stood at the passport control, greeting the people who are entering to his city. One by one, shaking hands with families, you know, making sure that the passport control is running properly because he does not want a queue at the entrance of his city. That's the front face of, of, of Dubai. Does he need to do that? No. So that's, th- that's, that's my electricity socket in the clinic, you know? Definitely. It makes a difference. And it's almost, it's almost as if like with character itself, you can't necessarily teach that. Like with character as a, as a human being, if, if you do go through those stages, you have that willingness to, to be humble, to, to remember where you came from, to be able to then pass that exactly. on to the next generation, just like your, your family it's did It's a mindset. Well. It's a mindset exactly. that you need to you know, be brought up with because uh, the way it goes is when Sheikh Mohammed does that, the minister is going to do that. And after that, we're going to have the managers, the boss, the executive, the employees, the uh, janitors. It sets the precedent. And it goes down all the way. Like, I mean, I know he thinks like that. I know it's, I mean, a lot of people might not look at it that way, but I believe, and I see it here. Because my brother is here half an hour before work hour, working hours, I'm obliged to be here 15 minutes before, you know. I'm going to look bad in front of everyone. It's like he's, 20 years older than me and he's here before everyone else opening up the clinic. I mean, come on, you know, I have to be here earlier and therefore my nurse is going to be here early. And because of this, my patient is going to walk in and the treatment room is going to be ready. Mm -hmm. But if he's going to come two hours late because he's the boss and then I'm going to come an hour late because I'm also a boss and my nurse is not going to be ready because I'm not there to guide her. My nurse, my my patient is not going to get the best service. So you have to lead by example. That's how we do it here. 100%. Yeah. So now fast forward, I mean, the clinic's been open 24 years, which is an amazing achievement in itself. You still, from, from what I can see, obviously, you, and from your story, it seems that the hard work hasn't been lost over the years in any way, shape or form. You're still doing those long hours. You're still, you know, working on your craft. And whether that is maybe in a media side or even the dentistry side, hard work seems to be an important factor for you mm-hmm. so for anyone watching especially the younger viewers what what would you say in terms of hard work um and how important is it especially moving forward for the new generation nothing comes easy nothing is i mean i'm trying to think of someone that achieved it easily it, it just takes a lot of time a lot of effort uh, managing a lot of your expectations as well uh, a lot of learning, learning knowledge. That's one thing a lot of people are missing out on. And unfortunately, I all with all respect to everyone, but like a lot of people think that, oh, I just want to become a YouTuber, you know, post videos, make millions. I'll become the next, uh, what are they called? The, the Lo- Lo- Logan? Uh, J- I don't the know. Paul the Paul Brothers. Paul yeah, yeah, Brothers, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Paul Brothers, you know. Trust me, even their job is difficult. Huh? I, I mean, vlogging is not easy at all. Editing is not easy at it's all. It's a so, lifestyle. Yeah, but... It, those kids don't see that, you know, and knowledge in general, general knowledge is something. Knowledge is sexy, you know, a lot of people in many ways. I mean, it will contribute to your life. And I'm talking about the most basic things. You know, a lot of us, even myself, we're all like, oh, why do I have to learn all about the derivatives and the matrices and the integrations and math in school? Like, I'm never going to use this. I want to work in media or I want to become an influencer. No, no, it's the way I look at it. Every experience and every piece of information that enters our brain in this life expands the plastic bag. I call our brain a plastic bag. You know, our brain is a plastic bag. You keep adding stuff, useful or useless, whatever it is, those formulas, those poems, Shakespeare poems that you learned in school, that will expand the plastic bag. But you know what's very nice about plastic is that it does not shrink. It's not rubber. It does not go back to its shape. So when you forget all of those useless information, your brain is still expanded. And that's where the useful things in life fit in easily. It's a process of expansion. I love that analogy. You know? So what I say to all of those kids is you go work hard, you go learn, go to school, learn books, learn all of these useless 
poems that you are fed up of uh, you're just in the process of expanding your horizon and then when the right time comes when you're in actually the place where your career starts you'll find it so easy to adapt you know because you've already been through the tough part now it's just a matter of filling the useful things up so yeah um it does, I mean, it's all about the hard work, whether it's about learning or actually putting the physical work into it. I think in every industry it's needed. I love that. I love yeah. that. So for all of those viewers that, um, you know, may be motivated by this, but or may have, you know, always wanted to go into that medical slash business field. Mm. What would you say is the key to to getting into that? Because it's not necessarily the easiest path. Um, you have to obviously spend a lot of years studying and, and going through that. Um, how did you stay driven and motivated during that period of just the, the, the education side to get to that final destination where you could then reap the rewards? I mean, the, the typical answer would be, you know, find your passion, follow it, work hard for it. If you love something, you'll excel at it. No. <laughs> With all respect to all the influencers online and all that, I think it's all about dedication and hard work. Sometimes life does not offer you everything you're passionate about. Let's face it. Yes, okay, it's, it's nice when you wanna just chase those dreams, let things off, let go of all the things that you don't want and follow that passion. But let me tell you- Life is not fair. That's one and a good 50% of people around the world don't know what's their passion. And I'm not talking about the younger ones. I'm talking about you know people who are in their 30s and 40s. They still haven't discovered their passion. They might not admit it, but I know that's true. So until then, what are you going to do? Sit back there, you know, and wait for your passion to drop from the sky? No, it's not going to happen. You work with what you have, you know, uh, and things will come along. I believe the harder you work, the luckier you get. Who said that? I know that from a movie. Uh, so uh, I, I, I believe in that. So my advice for the medical industry and dentistry because getting into it is already difficult. It's not like something that you're gonna have there present in front of you. So that's where the things go vice versa. If you are doing this because your parents want you to become doctor or engineer or lawyer, please don't do it, you know? Because already getting into it is a, is a hassle, it's a struggle, you know? So doing something that's difficult because you're forced into it is not doing something that's difficult because that's what you have, you know? Uh, so my biggest and first advice is please make sure that there is something that you like because if you don't like it there is plenty of other easier options which will get you there faster and easier and I think we are I mean at least for the Arabic culture I think it's about time to get over this whole you know doctor engineer lawyer and I'm a doctor I'm saying it out loud you know it's, yeah come on like we, we've seen influencers and fashionistas now that are, you know, on the headlines and doctors aren't even considered anymore. So uh, just in this situation, I think make sure that you love this thing and make sure you know what you're getting yourself into because it's a long ride. It's many years mm -hmm. and it does not stop. You're going to be constantly learning and you need to be smart because competition is huge. It's, a, it's an oversaturated market, let's face it, at least in this part of the world. Of course. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's my advice. And then once you're in it, if you know that's something you want to do, it's not your family who's picking it for you, you're going to put the effort, you know, because you're going to be learning something that you like. It's inter it is very interesting, you know, if, if, if you look into it, it's, you're studying human body. That's like the biggest miracle on, on this planet. So it is very interesting, but you just need to know that that's what you really want. How for me, it was sorry to talk. For me, it was not the case. I'm giving an advice mm -hmm. based on what I see now in the current time. Back in the days, for me, it was the opposite. It was something that I wanted to do for a purpose. My purpose was to initially pay back, you know, but to return the favor. So uh, that's what I did it. And it kind of happened the totally opposite way. But I'm, I'm not ashamed to say it. A lot of people tell me like, oh, you had it already. OK, fine, whatever. But uh, no, for me, it went the other way around and I took the burden of actually carrying this responsibility uh, and making sure to maintain it because picking up something from there and dropping it is even more difficult than starting it from scratch. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, my scenario is different. Everyone's scenario is different. So, but for the typical one, I would say just you know, work hard for it if you really want to do it. That's all. Yeah, it's almost like um, in in like the Olympics, you have those races that are just an individual running, and then you have ones that the baton is being passed. Um, you know, yeah. and, and sometimes that can be harder because you're. It depends on how the person before you did, yeah. and if they did an extremely good job, then now the pressure's on you, exactly. and you have to maintain that. Exactly. Um, so that's super interesting. How how important is the business side um, of of running a clinic? Because I guess a lot of people they go into that medical field not necessarily being taught the entrepreneurial side. Um, obviously, you guys have your own clinic. How, how would you say is the business side is even more important than the day to day operations? Not more important, but it's massive. I mean, I, I'm sure there's plenty of doctors that can provide the service as good as mine, but it's just that they're not delivering it out there to the public properly. Um, so that's the thing. That's one thing that that's one problem we have in the medical industry in general, dentistry or others. Uh, unfortunately, most doctors are book smart. Uh, and that's not a bad thing, you know. They're actually we need those people because they can look into things in life in a totally different different perspective. But we can't deny that you know the business skills and this being street smart, uh, smart, and all of this does play a huge role. So I think we kind of for us we had this in the family genetically. My grandfather had this. So uh, I mean, putting that with the skills, with the hard work. Perfect that's like the magic combination so uh my, my advice to uh, the student because now i'm doing a lot of courses for the younger generation with um uh, gadha it's a, it's a um, it's an institute to provide you know uh, motivational speeches and stuff like that um i always advise uh, dental graduates to yes do further courses you know improve your hand skills but at a certain point you need to start taking business and communication courses. I believe communication is everything, especially for our, I mean, because the patient will trust you before you touch him. You know, like it's the conversation you have with the patient first, mm -hmm. how you're selling yourself to the patient. I don't like to use the word selling, how you're presenting yourself mm -hmm. uh, is, is the stronger point that the patient's gonna see before your work. So. Of and course. it's also what is going to keep them coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, um, I had uh, one of my, uh, I attend a lot of communication uh, uh, courses, like every once in a while, just to keep myself up to date. And I went to, a, it wasn't communication, a quality control uh, uh, course, which was in a hospital. And I saw this patient that was nagging over the medical director to actually do her surgery. She's like, please, 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 I want you to do my surgery. And then he's like, yeah, no, you know, I'm very busy. I can't. It's like, no, come on. Like, you were there. You saw everything that happened. Why don't you work on me? Like, I feel very comfortable with you. And she was begging him. She was like, I'm going to pay you whatever you want. Please do my surgery. I don't want that doctor to do my surgery. It's like, oh. And I didn't know that guy very well. Later on, he gave us a course. I wanted to. I was like, dude, get it done. <laughs> he was like, I'm not a doctor. He's like, I'm a medical director. I, don't know. <laughs> I manage this place, but I'm not a doctor. I don't know how to give an injection. Wow. That's skills. That's communication skills. The patient wanted, wanted him to operate on her. And he wasn't even, a wasn't even a doctor. So imagine you have that with the actual skills. That's, you can't compete with that. That's amazing. Yeah. And um, let's talk about your 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 day to day um, and also Dubai life because, mm -hmm. for from my perspective, it's I mean uh, I I kind of see it from. Uh, an outsider's perspective um, we're in the process of you know bringing our business here as well um, and so I guess this is a more selfish question for myself but I'm sure people along the way will also benefit um, I, I know we talked about the comparison of London to Dubai but what does your day-to-day -day look like and you've experienced both in a sense what would you say the cultural differences are in terms of doing business in in Dubai Dubai is much easier really yeah I mean uh Everything is so, f I mean, the government here tries to facilitate everything, you know, if they see you succeeding, they'll help you out, like they won't make it more difficult. It's not like, oh, you're making more money, let's get more out of you. No, you're making more money, let's support you. 
Because at the end of the day, you're a Dubai boy. I mean, you get the credit, they get the credit as well. Look at Kareem. Kareem, the, the mm-hmm. Uber, I mean, uh, now it's Uber. Kareem started from Dubai and they supported them. And when that deal happened with Uber, Sheikh Mohammed uh, greeted them and he had a meeting with them and congratulated them for all their achievement. And that achievement falls under the name of Dubai now because it was established in Dubai. So I love this. I respect this uh, about Dubai. And it is one of, it is the fastest growing city in the world in every way, you know. So when all the technology is being um, introduced to the government, I can start my own company, which I recently did and this new thing I got into without visiting any any buildings i did not go anywhere i did not go to any departments it was all online with you know this i mean i cannot mention names there's companies that facilitate things for you it's an application you download you upload your papers bam one week later you have a company um, with virtual banks i don't need to go and stand in queue and you know to start my bank and then all oh, you there's this missing paper you know what I'm talking about. I don't want to criticize London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, Sometimes you have to wait 18, 24 yeah, weeks yeah, for But, but silly you don't, things. you don't have that in in Dubai. London does have a lot of a lot of pluses, you know, culturally as well. But it's not that Dubai doesn't. It's just we're getting there. For me, Dubai I think it's, is is UAE is 50 years old. That's like nothing. That's like it's like a new shiny building. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. I mean, it's 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 50 years old. That's UAE. Dubai is even younger than that. So. Yeah. To, to achieve this and this time, I mean, I think I think I would pick Dubai any day. Yeah, I think for me it's the weather, the safety, and the the fact that it's almost east and west in a, in a sense where you you have that access to religion and and, and you being, can be whatever you want. Exactly. Which, by the way, London is somewhat like that. I mean, uh, there, there is like what stuff that we hear. It's a bit extreme a to the other side, I think. Yeah, but uh, no, that's one thing about Dubai. You want to party, you party. You want to <laughs> pray, you pray. You know. Yeah. You can uh, go to. Yeah, you can do whatever you want, and you stand in the mall with like all religions next to you, all different personalities. You have the hijab, and you have the skirt. You have the beard, and you have the hairstyle. So people are happy. I, I mean, it's, it's yeah. It's that's nice. that's the thing. It's it's a nice view to to look at. You know. Definitely, I think yeah. you know in so many cities around the world. People are working every day and, and they're, they're working hard and, and they're, they're, they're living their lives, but they're not really content. And for me, I think that is, I, I never thought that the environment that you were in had that impact. We are officially announced as the happiest city in the world. You know, wow. we got awarded that I a couple of that. years ago. Yeah, Dubai was announced. They had it on Emirates Towers, like a huge <laughs> smiley face. The happiest city in the world, uh, uh, happiest, uh, happiest people in the world. In Arabic, Asad Shaab for Alam. Yeah, they received an official award for that on the statistics wow. of happiness. Uh, so yeah, that's something too. That's an achievement. Yeah, that's definitely. I mean that's a big achievement. That's like a second Burj Khalifa to exactly <laughs> to, to list that. You know, <laughs> that's something you can't necessarily even buy. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk about your other kind of business side of things um i know you mentioned earlier on the podcast that you have other things going on other investments other things that you've made time for now that you have cemented your kind of legacy in the medical field yeah um what are some of those things and also how do you manage your time with those investments and side projects okay um so i've been investing in a couple of things the past couple of years on top of them all is real estate which is guided by my elder, my other brother, Mohanad al Wadiya, who, by the way, is my brother from the same mother and father, before you guys ask on social media, because that's like the most common question. It's really? Same, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's Mohanad al Wadiya. I'm Mohammed Naji. My father's name is Naji, but our family name is al Wadiya. So my name is Mohammed Naji al Wadiya, and his name is Mohanad Naji al Wadiya. But he took the family, I took the father's name. There you name. go, the secret's been revealed. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so uh, for like the fifth time, <laughs> but they keep asking. So yeah, he, he got me to real estate. So that's one thing. I believe that is the safest and uh, best long-term investment that you can ever make. I mean, real estate is always... Local real estate or international real estate? Local, for now. Okay. Yeah, I do have plans for international. So, would, I mean, educate me on that because yeah. uh, I guess I'm... Return I'm on investment is brilliant in Dubai for the time being. A lot of things are happening, a lot of projects uh, of, of different... Um, 
you know, standards or different uh, classes. So I personally believe in investing in anything that suits the middle or the lower class of the society, because there's always a market for that to rent out. You know, I don't believe in for investment, not to live we'll in. Always need, yeah. uh, People will always live. need an apartment, like a two bedroom apartment for a family or a studio for a single man to live in. That's a given. So I would rather investing in multiple small units like that rather than buying a huge villa in the pond that no one can afford. So uh, that's that's how I, I look into real estate. Uh, I also partnered up in multiple companies, multiple startups. I can't really mention the name because I wanted to be a silent partner, but in different industries. Like I always wanted to have something in all different industries, uh, food and beverage, uh, health and wellness, not dentistry, like fitness, um, uh, and then application. I wanted to achieve those three. Amazing. So application is pending. First two, alhamdulillah, where, you know, started off. Um, and crypto. Mm, interesting. Yeah. yeah. What are your thoughts on it? I mean, it's obviously, good. It's obviously good. you're doing it, but you know, it's good as long as you know when to stop. Don't be greedy, and I mean, don't not not to withdraw all your money, but when to stop. Because a lot of traders, you know, they just keep holding, 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 and then you. I'm a holder, like they call them hodlers in the crypto world. Uh, I would rather keep it. For me, it's a retirement plan. There is a few coins that I like to play with whenever I'm bored. Uh, I mean, up and down. Uh, if if you know how and when to buy and sell, and if you're patient enough, you can make good money out of that. But there's a few coins. I mean, if you read more about that, there's a few coins that you put your money in for long term. So you just let it be. You know, no matter how high it goes, don't sell. No matter how low it drops, don't sell. You know, so you just let it be because there's a long. It's all about a lot of people just look at the coin itself and they look at the chart. It goes like, oh, okay, it's volatile. Probably I'll just sell up here. And I'm, I'm but you good. don't really have a plan. But no, sense. they don't know the back end of the coin. Mm. Like they don't know what, what is this coin based on. Like there's a company that's running. There's a purpose for this coin. So a lot of people don't know that. They don't look into that. So I always make sure that I read about every coin and the company behind it. And according to that, I either invest for long term or short term. Just there's a couple of good coins now in the market to you know trade with so yeah so you're very diversified you've got the safe investments and then you've got the ones that are a little bit more yeah my advice when it comes to crypto and that's what i did mm -hmm. personally immediately withdraw your initial investment so okay so you break as, even yeah as soon as i doubled i withdrew my initial amount so i invested for example with 100 dirhams as soon as they became 200 dirhams, I withdrew 100. Mm. And let the 100... That way you've never go. lost anything, yeah. basically. I mean, and that, in the crypto, this could happen in a couple of hours, trust me. Like, if you know where to put your money, sometimes you can achieve that in a couple of days. So, uh, just w withdraw your initial investment and uh, let it throw. You know, you're not going to lose anything. From sitting with you, it seems like you are very you're an individual who can adapt very well to different situations i mean you had a, a difficult upbringing um you know at the beginning especially and you then decided to get into dentistry you're now in multiple investments wearing your business hat um and crypto is obviously something relatively new and a lot of entrepreneurs they choose to stay away from it because of maybe fear maybe lack of knowledge um, but it seems like you're willing to jump at these things and, and but also learn and and have that knowledge before you dive into that is that is that something that i'm correct in saying and that you've always had um or is that something that has gradually happened as you become more successful it's something that i want to achieve i have a lot of boxes i want to tick you know it's uh, uh it's fulfilling for me you know i that's how i enjoy my life by achieving things not not to compete with anyone not to prove to anything to anyone but i mean that's what i do uh, and i just want to i mean my the other day someone asked me who's your biggest competitor me yesterday that's that's I literally that. that's that's my biggest competitor every day so i want to do something new i want to try something new every day as long as i'm not hurting anyone as long as i'm not taking ridiculous risks mm -hmm. uh yeah. Uh, whilst whilst on that conversation of competition, actually, um, we live obviously. You know, you spend a lot of time in social media. Um, 
we we do live in the era where I mean, especially in the UK, we live in the era where people like to compare a lot. Um, they like to look at what they don't have. They look. They like to look at what other people do have, whether that's in a business context or or otherwise. What would you say about that in terms of because it it's, it can be very detrimental for the young young viewers and audience. So, what would your advice be on that in terms of comparisons and and not getting distracted by social media as opposed to using it as a tool? Not just that in specific, but in every way. My motto in life is live and let live. Whether you're going to criticize or you're going to envy. It's not going to change anything for you. Um, and trust me, a lot of, I mean, for the kids looking at social media, I have seen and met them all. There is a good 90% fake stuff going on on social media. Um Sadly, but it's true. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I know those people. I, I've met them. <laughs> they either don't have it or they do and they're miserable. It's, you will not know that until you actually have it. Um, Which is funny because we all really, I mean, anything that we uh, strive for is ultimately for contentment, for happiness. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, I, I can't remember who the other day I read this beautiful quote of I think it was Matthew McConaughey or Ed Sheeran one of those big celebrities he was like I wish I can give everyone like a hundred million dollars and a huge palace and like uh, tens of fancy cars just for them to know that this is not happiness the, the chase is almost more yeah you know so it's not that and you know, a lot of the kids now that we're speaking about, look at the numbers now and like how many followers you have and your fancy cars and a lot of that. I mean, trust me, you are not rich if you want to speak money or wealthy. You're not wealthy until you get on a private jet and not take a photo. I love that. As long as you're... T- and I do. I would take a photo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not there yet. I would happily take a photo. But if you want to, you know, brag about your big games and like, you know, my Lambo in front of my private jet, if you're taking, still taking photos of that, you're not there, you know? So, uh, but the, the problem is, is that we know this in real life. Yeah, I'm telling the How, kids this. No, now. no. However, <laughs> for, for the youth, it almost seems that the perception does impact them, if that makes sense. So the fake it to you yeah. make it culture does seem to kind of, I don't know. No, it, if the fake it till you make it will bite you in the apple you know it, it's uh, maybe look I believe in luck I, I mean I, I agree believe, with I you mean, but it could happen but I wouldn't risk it I would rather you know what the best part of this of your story in the future that book you want to write with your photo and the quote next to it because you're successful the best part is your struggle point that is like the part where people are that's the part you're going to brag about 100% you know so let it happen give yourself space for that to happen because one day what i mean if you lied about it this whole time what what are you going to say i'm an easy come up you know exactly it's it's funny you say that because i actually used to say that myself in a sense where when i was going through my hardest days in business in life i used to almost remind myself that i'm actually living my story Mm. and that one day i'm going to look back on this and, and think if i didn't have this part the story no one would buy it no there there is no story and you know what it's not about what you have or what you show. Sometimes happiness is, is totally different. Achievement is totally different. <laughs> the other day, this very funny incident happened in the clinic. This patient walks into... Um, so it was me and my brother. We were doing consultations together. And this patient walks into the room. Uh, and not to brag, but it is what it is. Dr. Majd is currently the most popular... I mean, the most followed dentist in the, in the world. So not me. Him. So when he's there, I mean, he's, his presence, you know, he's, he's there. This patient walks in, she's like, doctor, just to start off, you know, I just want you to know that I'm here today because my dentist is fully booked. <laughs> so I was like, oh God, not, I mean, not now. <laughs> so he, he looked at her, he was like, well, lucky me, you know, that your dentist is fully booked. We got to meet you. So please grab a seat. So she got on the dental chair. He did the checkup and she, she had a small feeling. Uh, he doesn't usually do that. Uh, but he was like, you know what? I heard that this is fully booked. I'm going to do this. <laughs> so he actually drilled the tooth, put the filling, you know, did everything well. She got off the chair. He was like, can I please ask you one question just before you leave? 
She was like, yeah, sure. And she was happy. She got a good treatment. He's like, who's your dentist? And then she gave him this name. He, I, I saw it on his face. She left the room. He's like, who's this guy? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> He's like, well, what, what was she saying? Like, what does she mean? He's fully booked. I was like, I don't know. So I went around the clinic to all of the dentists and like our colleagues were like, guys, have you heard of this guy? No. And that's weird. I mean, in Dubai, Dubai is a pretty small city. And like, mm-hmm. anyway, you, you know, if you don't know them in person, you've heard about those dentists, you know. Uh, they didn't know him. So just until the day where one of those engineers came, the guys that fixed the, I mean, they maintained the dental chairs in the clinic. Because those guys go all around the country, the, the suppliers of the dental chairs. So I went up to one of them. I was like, oh, man, look, you know, gee, I wrote his name. I don't want to forget it. I was like, who's this guy? He was like, oh my God, of course I know him. I was like, who is he? Like, how do you know him? He was like, he's this dentist that has a tiny clinic in an old apartment in Sharjah. Wow. And, and I knew the building because there was a popular falafel place underneath. He was like, he's in that building. I was like, and? He was like, yeah, he has two dental chairs. He does not have a reception. It's like very small. He does not take appointments. People queue up. And it's the only clinic where we are allowed from our company to go do the maintenance on the weekend because there's no way we can get into his clinic on weekdays. Fully booked. He's like, people queue up to the elevator of the building trying to get it. I was like, okay, where's the magic? He was like, he, his prices are a bit low, which suits his community. Uh, and he does a clean job. That's it. Simple as that. You can just close it. So, and and that's it. So, uh, later that I got to know about him more, I wouldn't be shocked if this guy makes even like 10 times more than more, more, more money than we do. He does not have social media. And he's not putting any effort. He's been there for so many years. He's not putting any effort into even letting us know who he is. He's not competing. He's not out there putting fake comments or anything, you know, trying to grab our attention. He's doing his job. He has a standard level of patience that's been coming to him. He's very successful in that community. His family is happy. He's healthy. I think he's much wealthier than a lot of huge clinics or huge investors that I know. The man is making his money. He's going on a nice, beautiful vacation every couple of months. His kids are going to good schools. People love him because his prices are reasonable. He has a huge market. Is he not happy? Is he not wealthy? Of course he is. So that's, I mean, it's not the followers. It's not, it's not your, you know, the red carpet that you buy tickets to go to. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's my advice to the kids, you know, find happiness and other many other forms. And you know what? I think this is just normal because fame is the newest feature in a human being. We have over, I mean, it's not supposed to be like this. No, no, no. Almost. It it could be, but it's, it's new. It's brand new. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we grew up, I mean, throughout history, we've had all different characters. So we've had strong, we've had weak, we've had poor, we've had rich, uh, we've had, you know, the, uh, introvert, the extrovert. So, because that has been there since Adam and Eve, you know, we've known strong. uh, So we knew how to deal with the strong. We knew how to deal with the weak because they've been there. We knew how to deal with the rich. We knew how to deal with the poor and all different characters and features. But fame happened just with Elvis Presley, nothing before that. Mm -hmm. So it's a brand new feature. So and then social media fame is 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 even newer. newer. So for us, and I don't blame the kids. I don't blame the society because they're still new to this. Like they don't know how to deal with that, you know? we're that's it we know a strong person so you need to be you need to you know how to deal with him but a famous person is still like you know what what do i do do i ask for a photo or not you know do i like or not do i follow or he's not gonna follow me back now this is a daily dilemma everyone's like oh you give they give each other 24 hours if he didn't follow back i'm gonna unfollow him so so this is all new you know there there isn't rules and regulations for that you know they still did not standardized you know they the duration you need to give to your friend before you unfollow him. So it's normal. I mean, we're just humans. We're adapting. I love that. I yeah. Love that. 
Honestly, I think I could really sit here all day, um, but I know we're conscious of time. My final question I would say is family life and slash relationships. Yeah. Um, I, I think also, you know, the caveat to social media is, you know, I think the dynamic of any relationship has also changed. There's a lot more pressure. There's a lot more time sensitivity that you have to get back to this person and you have to communicate with this person. Um, you're an entrepreneur, a medical professional, very, very busy lifestyle. Um, how do you manage all of that? And what would your words of wisdom be for anyone following that path? Look, I mean, uh, working in all in all um, different things and putting your you know heart and soul into what you're doing is not for everyone. I mean, as much as I would love to balance between you know family, work, personal time, rest, and all that, it's kind of difficult. You're only one person, at the yeah. End of the day. So uh, the way I did it not necessarily the best way, is I decided to work today and dress tomorrow. Tomorrow as in 10 years from today. Yeah, the future. So, uh, yeah, I don't get much time to spend with my friends uh, or my family sometimes. Uh, it's it's not, uh, and again, I'm not saying this is the right way. I'm not encouraging you to stay distant from your family to, to work and to become successful, no. This I is actually, just your story. I actually love and respect people who, you know, prioritize their family and, you know, they, 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 when it's the weekend, it's the weekend. That's it. Don't talk to me about work. It's their way to go. I, I mean, it's amazing they can do that. I took a different path. It's a bit more hectic. It's a bit um, more um, isolating in a way. But, yeah. It I, is, think, I think the reality is, is it, that you can't have it all. Yeah, and it is what it is. <laughs> I love that. You know, it's just what uh, what you think is right for you. Uh, I have a certain thing I want to achieve in my life, and um, I don't want to rest until it's done. So that's just me. But you do you. I mean, whatever you think, just be happy. Hundred percent. I think I think the new wealth eventually, until we all break down from all the pressures that's been going on with the social media and everything we've been seeing, happiness will be the new wealth to to achieve so i think one day we're gonna uh, f- find a way to scale happiness and that will be the way to brag and to mm. to show off in front of people there must be a way soon we're gonna be able to measure happiness and this will smack a lot of people down because then you would know that a lot of them are out there you know bragging about their happiness and it doesn't exist Especially on social media, guys. I'm sorry. This is like a spoiler. Especially on social media. I know a lot of happy influencers, couples on social media that are actually divorced. So. Wow. Yeah. I don't know if you guys want to cut this. <laughs> yeah. So. It's okay. We're not mentioning any yeah, names. So, sorry, I came back to this. We're just trying here. I remember. Yeah. So. so basically, the, I guess the message is don't believe everything you see and, and always take it with a pinch of salt and, and focus on yourself as an individual as opposed to looking at what's out there because chances are that thing that you're looking at, that shiny new thing, is probably not going to make you happy anyway. Yeah. I shouldn't have worn my scrubs today. This totally went out of topic. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Next time I'll be a bit more casual. Yeah, so... Uh, brush your teeth every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, visit your dentist. So, obviously, I know we're, we're conscious of time. Um, but thank you so much for, obviously, making the time. Um, for anyone that has fallen in love with this conversation, like myself, what's the best place for them to follow you? And is there anything else exciting that you want to mention or anything that they can look forward to so you can uh, I mainly use my uh, Instagram which is uh, Dr. Mohammed Naji Uh, we'll put it in the description yeah we'll put it there Um, and my Facebook is also the same name uh, my page on Facebook Um, so uh, my upcoming project right now is uh, we are I'm working with as I said previously with Gadha uh, which is an institute where we have um, different um, experts from different industries and we target different audiences. My audience is the youth. So my, my topic, my focus is about empowering the youth because I believe there is a lot of potential in our younger generation and we're not utili- utilizing that 
properly. We're underestimating what they can do. So um, the courses right now are online. We have uh, a couple of events coming up soon where we're going to have multiple speakers on stage where you can be there present with us and uh, we can have a chat and you can ask your questions live. Um, and hopefully soon we'll announce that we are starting this um, initiative where we are going to be collecting uh, ideas, business ideas from the younger generation. And uh, we're going to select a couple where we're going to partner up with them and make things happen for them to achieve their business goals. Of course, if they they have the right ideas and applicable ones. So, uh, yeah, we have a lot of faith in you guys coming up. So uh, we'll keep you tuned. Follow my page and we'll give you all the details. Amazing. Once again, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed this. Uh, thank you for coming all the way from the UK. Um, and I'd like to say this started off as a very formal uh, uh, <laughs> dental, dental interview. <laughs> Turned out totally different, but it's cool. <laughs> uh, so thank you for that. It was very, it was very real. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you all enjoy this. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you soon.